Welcome world back to the creation of the Oasis of Modern Design Aquascaping. Over the last umpteen years, we've been dreaming up this plan to transform this vinyl siding house into the most amazing high intensity, high detail water feature that we've ever created. Stay tuned as our team and our friends descend together on my house and demolish what I've built in the last 20 years during the creation of what we call the watering hole at the Oasis, at Modern Design. Stay tuned, because it's going to be amazing. Ow. Just a quick recap of what went on yesterday. So I wanted to touch base, kind of show you guys the progress of what's happening. We got the deep end of the pond dug. So I went to about six foot three on the excavation because I want to have six feet of water actually in the pond when we get done. And that'll be right outside the window. So you can see the two by fours over there. Again, that's going to be the bottom of those two by fours is going to be water level. So we'll have a little lip of exposed flagstone that matches that sill plate, that stone sill across there. We'll have matching stone that's coming up out of the pond. And that flat work is going all down the side of the house right there. So that when you look out the windows from inside, you don't see boulders sticking out for two feet. You see straight down into the deepest part of the pond. I think that jets shooting up and lights from down below casting, casting a light in an interaction area for the fish is going to be fantastic from inside the house because the fish are always going to be coming right up against the house. I'm literally going to be feeding my fish out the window. I'm so stoked about that. They put that sill up along the bottom where the two by fours are. That's what they put in there when they finish the stonework, you know, in order to hold it so it could dry. I'm a little worried about pulling that off there <laughs> and those sill plates, you know, they're nothing but just a little bit of mortar that's against the back of them. I really don't want to get hit in the head by one of those. Let him spray her. If it's, he cleaned before we put that stuff up last time, but yeah, because I want to have the waterproofing. I want to muck it under there and squish it down and then just roll the whole wall out. <laughs> These guys have gone down and they've basically put in a French drain just below pond level. So we got a video about bottom drains in a pond and that's the same thing they're doing right there. So in order to avoid having a bubble in the pond or building hydraulic pressure or gas underneath of the pond when it's finished, it'll be able to get into that at the lowest point and they're putting in a drain that runs out to the lower side of the feature. That'll take any water that gets in there from anywhere and get it away from the water feature to keep the foundation of my house dry so I don't have any problems. We're doing like 14 added layers of protection because the last thing in the world I want to have is water issues inside my basement. So that's what's going on with that. We've got the shape going on around the bottom of the pond. Right now we're getting ready to jump on putting drainage along the inside of this retaining wall. What's going to happen is we're sort of reverse building this pond so as we come up out of the water, that's a 36 inch deep shelf where Hunter's walking over here. That's probably another 30 inches of water-ish on that shelf, so we actually have to build when the liner's in. We'll build the inside of the pond, then we'll build this first shelf right on the flat ground, and then the liner will have to be flipped over, and we're gonna be compacting soil between that upper level of stone and the retaining wall over here. What that accomplishes for us is that we can create a flower bed in there. That's why we need this drainage, thus the black paint on the wall, so they've done two layers of waterproofing. Anywhere that it's painted black on the wall is where I expect to have soil up to that height. So from inside my house, I don't expect to see any of this wall. The goal is, is that I have a little flower bed across the top. When you look out, you've got the pond level. You've only got about this much stone above pond level. My water, this is all about pond for me. It's about the fish, it's about the swimming and the grandkids and the interaction. It's not about big massive waterfalls. Those are all gonna be down there. So if you wanna hear crashing water, you're gonna have to walk around to the lower side of the house. Up here, it's all about the fish. It's about subtle, small waterfalls, lots of jets in here so that the water stays moving, keeps it clean, and we're gonna cover up as much of this as we can. Now the flower bed will give us a place to put small shrubbery, basically that's gonna disappear the wall. And then we have the beautiful backdrop of the hill and the trees and all the woods back there. Anytime we do a water feature, we work that way. So it's like layers of, of depth, if you will, to, to the landscape. So you've got the water, then you've got the stones and the waterfall coming into the pond. You've got small shrubbery. That gives the mind the impression that the water's coming from somewhere further away. And then if you can disappear the man-made stuff with the small shrubbery, and then in the distance, you have more greenery, 
then it gives you a feeling of grandeur. We're gonna save this juniper. It's a Hollywood juniper. I actually bought that tree when it was in a gallon pot and put it in that spot two decades ago. I'm gonna carbon date myself, but it's really important structural plant to me and I want to keep that and make it magnificent landscape around it. I'm going to elevate that thing to a whole new level when we get done with that corner. Let me rephrase this in a better fashion. You guys just need to get all of this flat right here so that it's a pond shelf. Yeah. Then they're getting this installed where they're just going to pile three quarter inch gravel up over top of it and maybe cut a piece of underlayment to lay over it to create this little channel for water to run out of. They're going to do the same thing on the other side, pile the gravel over the back side. We can backfill all that soil and get that finished. I want to think about something. After we put the waterproofing on, my last line of defense is one piece of liner glued to the wall. I'm thinking about the pond liner too. I mean, if we could just figure out a way to temporarily hold it when we put the actual pond liner up. We're going to have another layer. We're going to have that liner, another layer of underlayment or rock pad going up the wall. Then the pond liner. We're going to have a sandwich of all that crap going up to the top. That's only, that's only this far above water level. You can't put a bunch of holes in it because it's going to be behind those pieces of flagstone. There's no getting back to it to deal with it later. But, I mean, at whatever point we stop, there's gonna be the next inch down is gonna be the new point. So it's really the only potential problem is what we've scraped or exposed right along the very bottom and that's where all the water's gonna sit. Anything that runs through underneath the liner is gonna end up running right into there and it's gonna sit against the house right at that spot. So we just need to make sure that we're very visibly cautious about what's exposed along that point because that's truly the only weak spot and no matter how deep we dig it's going to be the weak spot there's no getting to the bottom of it there's no getting to the bottom of it we're putting a drain in there so as long as we make sure that this pitch is that way and that's the path of least resistance water will be going that way um, my intent is to put the piece up and have like a quarter inch shortage all the way across push them against the bottom, put a band of concrete across the bottom to hold them against the wall, and then clear silicone so that whatever splashes in there comes out. I'm gonna take myself down to the bottom and start wrapping my brain around how I'm gonna lay out the soil, what direction the waterfalls are gonna go in. We've got hundreds of yards of excavated soil. I, can, I have a total blank slate and I can build anything I want. So I'm gonna go down there and start dreaming that up while these guys are getting this finished up here. the liner into the wall. Oh, so we're gonna need like, he said put screws in. This back wall right behind me, there is all sorts of levels of madness about this thing. So we've got like a rubber coating on there for waterproofing. Uh, we just did some silicone touches, little Chico and I. We've got some kind of tar paper that's up there and now we're bringing in a spare liner that's gonna be like bolted into the wall. I think there's something else dad's gonna put on there followed by the actual pond liner. I don't know, it's like six layers of Kevin Bacon or something like that. <laughs> Freaking wild, wild, wild. So we're actually gonna take this. We took two by fours off of that section right up there so that we could get this guy up there and tack it because that was our biggest challenge is like, how are you gonna make the liner stay against the wall? It's just weird, really weird. You have that people like in the windows upstairs just hanging out the whole time, holding up the liner so that we could actually get stuff done in there, random. But that is pretty much what we got going on so that we can actually get the bottom drain put in on this section of the pond, running out that way, and be done in the bottom of the pond. So I'm gonna get to playing with some liner because that is the next step in the equation here. And quite frankly, I'm tired of waterproofing this wall. It's good to be getting close to done with that. So. <laughs> Do you miss me I'll just uh, go find somewhere to relax, wait on you. No, you couldn't stand tall. So why didn't you, why didn't you call? 
<laughs> Probably get fired though, so I'm gonna get that machine. That's what we're eating today? Yep. A little bit of baby. Up, like sleeping. Baby Goanna. Good morning, Tristan. It's almost time to go to work. It's past time to go to work. Mmm, Tristan who? Tristan who? Tristan who stayed up all night drinking beer that the old man got and then was too tired to get up for work today? That Tristan. No idea. He's definitely not here on my job site though. He's sleeping somewhere peacefully. Tristan? Come on, man. Do you miss me at all? Yep. We lost him. It's his day off. I just ate, thanks. Does the body good. You might have to give it a freaking laxative from this side. Mic check. Huh? One, two. Mic check. Check his mic. No. A little mud? A little something, something. A little something, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost limbs. 